So now that I have this alarm event, what should I do with it? Why don't I go ahead and say if the alarm object class tag is the controller, so once again to identify which object is actually firing the alarm, why don't I go ahead and create some enemies? So to begin with, why don't I just create one? I'm going to create this out of my enemy list. List max was my initial count of how many enemies are going to be in the list. There's going to be a new game object. And when I first create this thing, it's going to start at that first coordinate up there, the coordinate array. So it's going to be the zero slot of that, because computer scientists start counting at zero. And the same thing with the y coordinates. I'm going to make this uh, 15 by 15, I suppose. I need to give it some sort of color. Well, why don't I do this? I'll create a color that's red. So these are red, green, blue values, so with full red and nothing in green and blue. That should be a complete red color. Let's see, I probably should create a tag for this as well. So that same value, list max, dot class tag is an enemy. I'm using that for checking to see projectiles later or updating objects. Should probably give this a speed of some sort. So maybe just one to move, begin with, just so we can see that it's working. And then I need to set up which coordinate it's starting at. So I should change the coordinate array. So it's going to start in the first of those pairs. So it's going to start at 42, 22. And once it reaches that point, it'll then change the coordinate to be 1, so it goes to the 82, 22 spot. Now that I have this actual object, let's add one to list max. And then I should create another alarm for this thing. Three thousand will be three seconds, because that's in milliseconds. Whoa! Looks like I need to reset my coloring. So every time that I draw this, I probably need to make sure that this is white. So I'm going to do a fill with the color white. And actually, now that I think about it, I'm going to have a lot of colors that I'm going to want to use over and over again. Why don't I make those constants up here at the top? So after this, I'm going to create an int, which is secretly what colors are, white color, and make that equal to the color 255, 255, 255. Otherwise I'll have to memorize what all these codes are, and if I get it wrong, that'll be kind of a pain. If I have it in one place and just say white color everywhere, that'll make it a lot easier for me to remember what's going on in my game. Let's see, what was the other thing? I needed the enemy color. And that was color 255, zero, zero. So now, when I'm actually creating these things, I'm going to say enemy color. And when I'm drawing these, I will say white color. Alright, so they're moving. Now, one of the things that it's doing is it's following my default movement commands with these enemies. That's not exactly what I would like to do. I actually want to override what the speed and direction is doing. Now, unfortunately, that means that I'm going to have to go change the update event. So if I go down here into the main section of the code, before we get to the game object, I have this update objects. This is what's doing the default behavior for movement. And in fact, it's doing it right here. That's where it's updating the X and Y position. 
with the enemies, I want to do something completely different. I want to actually directly control what they're doing. So I'm going to check and see if that thing that I'm updating, if it's class tag, is an enemy. And if it is, I'm going to run an enemy update function here. If it's not, we're fine using the default behavior. So this is the default movement. So now if I run this, it should not move at all when they get created. There we go. Okay, what is going to go into this enemy update? I'm probably going to want to take the game object and pass that in so that I can do some checks on its coordinates to see where it is. I have to walk through and check and see which one of the enemies which coordinate this uh, enemy is at. And in order to do that, I have to match it up with my enemy list. It's kind of an unfortunate consequence of using those parallel arrays. A better way would probably be to create a child class of game object, which is for enemies. But we're not going to really get into that in this particular class. We'll get into that in Java programming if you want to continue on. So I'm going to walk through my list of all my enemies. So if the enemy I'm passing in is a particular one, this will let me know that once these two match, I know that B is the location of both the enemy and its coordinates. So I need to check and see if it's reached the end of the list of coordinates first. Because I, once I reach the last one, I don't want to get an out-of-bounds exception. So I'm going to go check and see if this thing, well, if it's not equal to the coordinate max. That means that I still have some place to go on my path. So now I need to figure out where I need to go for the next spot in the path. So if I'm going to the right, there's going to be an x value that I need to move in that direction. If there's a path going down or going up, then I need to change my y position. Let's actually figure out what that is. So I'm going to go ahead and find what the difference between my current position and where I'm trying to get to is. I'm going to go look at the x-coordinate of, well, it's going to be that 42 up and above. So that's going to be my enemy coordinate at b. So the zero spot in the pathway, the one spot on the pathway, whatever my next one I need to get to is. Kind of weird, passing arrays into arrays, but there you go. And then I'm going to compare that to my x position. Once I subtract those two, that should be how far I need to go to get to the next point, at least in the x direction. And now we're going to do the same thing for the y direction. So the enemy chord at b, looking in that y list, that second one. And then we're going to subtract off the enemy's y position. Okay, now that we have these, how do we actually move? Well, we need to figure out whether we're going to go in the x direction or the y direction, and then we need to normalize it based on that. For those of you who've never heard the word normalize, it means that we're going to go one unit in that direction. And the way we do that is we divide by whichever thing is larger. So let's find out which of these two is bigger, the x difference or the y difference. I'm going to take the value of it in absolute terms, because whether it's negative or not, it's the larger difference in terms of from beginning to end that matters to me, rather than the direction. So if the x difference is greater than the absolute value of the y difference, that means that I'm going to need to divide by the x difference. So my enemy's x is going to be, well, I probably should do the y first because that's going to 
if you divide it by x. So I'm going to add on to the y position the y difference divided by the absolute value of the x difference. So that's that normalization thing. So that's one unit in the direction we're going. And then if I have a different speed value, I can multiply that by enemy speed. So this basically says, however far away you are from your distant point, go one in that direction, and then we're going to multiply by how fast we're going, how many pixels is the idea. Well, it sounds like we need to do the same thing. What's that equal to in there? Same thing with x. So the x difference is going to be itself divided by this. So it's going to be 1, probably. Largely, this works because we're going to be on the grid itself. If we were going to be looking at diagonals as well, we might have to worry about looking at the hypotenuse of triangles and whatnot. Hopefully we won't have to do that. Ooh, one thing we are going to have to worry about though is that what happens when we get close to the actual coordinate? What if going one in that direction would jump us completely over that point? We probably should check and see if the distance from us to that point is less than our step. So if this difference is less than our speed. We may have to just jump to that point and just go up one in our coordinate space. Otherwise, we'll do this stuff here. Okay, so how do we jump to that point? Well, we need to go ahead and set our x to whatever that next coordinate is. which is that one, the enemy coordinate at B. And we'll do the same thing with the Y position. And that means that we can actually just move on to the next point. So let's go ahead and update our coordinate, that the one that we're looking at in the path, to the next one. So if we're going from 0 to 1, once we reach the 1 spot, we're now going to be looking at going from 1 to 2. Oh, I should probably make sure I actually call this 2. I'll be passing in objects A. So we've done all of that for one direction. If the x difference is greater than the y difference, what about going the other way? So I'm going to go ahead and do this in the other direction. So put in an else statement there. And I need to do that check on this side as well. So copy and paste that from the other side. This is checking the y position. Let's see, this should be fine because I'm checking the x and y in the same place. And then this is going to be dividing by the y position instead. So I'm going to move this down afterwards. Just to keep it in consistent with this pattern. And I'm going to be dividing by the y difference in both places. 